Hey guys, this video is not about Docker or self-hosting uh, like we normally talk about on this channel, but uh, I actually did create something that will help me maintain some of my Docker hosting stuff, and we will cover that in the video, but this video is sponsored by Orter. Uh, they reached out to me a few weeks ago after I made a social media post about an acrylic wind tunnel that I had built to uh, to keep my uh, Latte Panda 3 a little bit cooler than it was currently running. Uh, they gave me basically a two-week challenge to uh, to take their device that I've never used one of. I've never used a laser engraver or, or anything like that, but they gave me a two-week challenge to come up with a project um, and, and build something with their device, and that's what this video is about is kind of my learning process of going through and learning how to use a laser engraver uh, slash laser cutter. Uh, this is a, a, a 10 watt uh, diode laser just to get that out of the way. Um, and I've had a lot of fun. I've had a lot of frustration. Uh, I've, I've only I've only sworn a few times, um, but uh, that's what this video is about. And I wanted to be very clear about that up front. Uh, Orcher sponsored this video and gave me a two week challenge. So let's jump in and see what I did with it. So if you've visited any of my public facing websites like dbtech.com, dbtech.fans, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, this is the server uh, that you have uh, accessed those sites on. Of course, in Docker containers on a Proxmox server. Uh, that is a Latte Panda 3. Uh, the lovely folks over at Latte Panda sent me that. And I noticed that it was getting warm. So I put together this acrylic case. Uh, basically, I 3D printed uh, some end caps uh, to go on, obviously, the ends to hold the fans in place. Uh, these are 5 volt LED fans. Um, so uh, I was able to just plug them in uh, to the uh, USB ports back here. I didn't like the way they fit with, with everything, so I actually cut them and then plugged them into the 5-volt uh, pins that you can kind of see over here. Um, and this is fine, but um, I wanted to do something more. Uh, the, like the, the, the acrylic... The acrylic I cut by hand and it looks like garbage if you look at it too closely. These end caps, again, like I said, they're 3D printed and they're fine, but I feel like I can do better. Luckily for me, the folks over at Orchard reached out about the same time that I created that case and they offered to send me their Laser Master 3. And that's what we're looking at here. Uh, of course, the, uh, there's, there's a ton of videos about this out there. Um, and, and there's just a few little comments that I want to say uh, before we get into anything. Um, Pay attention. If you get one of these, pay attention to these uh, to these side rails because um, they're not keyed, and you can put them in backwards. And that took me ten minutes to realize because, well, there you go. I don't know why, but um, but it went together very very smoothly, very easily, no issues really. Once I figured that out, um, I will say it does have Wi-Fi, so you can connect to it uh, via Wi-Fi and and actually do stuff on your or do 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 laser engravings and things like that using an app on your phone. It's actually a free app on your phone. Um, and to give you an idea of what that looks like, uh, you may have seen these in the background of, uh, of my videos recently. Uh, this was actually my very first uh, laser engraving that I did. And uh, I, I, I absolutely love it. Let me pull this over so we can kind of get a closer look at it. The the detail, the, 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 the clean edges, it just all looks so, so good. And of course I did that with the Laser Master 3. And as soon as I posted that on my private uh, Facebook page, Somebody was like, hey, uh, can you do like nameplates and stuff like that? So uh, I immediately put that together. Again, this one, this one went much faster. I did a much lighter burn on this. Um, and, and I think that it looks great as well. Even, even the little circuit boards there are, the circuit lines are, are lasered and the whole thing. <sighs> What you also don't maybe think about is the smell of burning wood. If you ever took wood shop in, in middle school, junior high, depending on where you're from, high school, whatever. If you like the smell of wood shop, you will love uh, burning or etching wood like this. So uh, so those were just kind of the first couple of things that I did. Uh, I've done some other things that I'll try to throw in here as well. My goal for today, uh, because of the intro that we, we took a look at over here with this case, is I want to clean this up a little bit. Now, I learned through trial and error and research and whatnot that uh, laser diode engravers and, and laser cutters, whatever, will not cut clear acrylic. So uh, after fighting with that for a while before I learned, uh, my goal is a, a little bit different. I'm gonna keep this acrylic in place. I may have to tweak it a little bit, but uh, my goal is to uh, kind of make this uh, like a, a window, so to speak. Um, and then I've actually got uh, some black acrylic. I ordered four sheets of 12 by 12 
Um, I think, uh, yeah, eighth inch, 12 by 12, uh, black acrylic. Uh, this is cast acrylic, if, if you care. I ordered two sheets of this. And what I'm going to do, uh, I've actually got this over here. You may have seen it. I've already got one sheet on here. And over here, uh, this is Lightburn. I'm still in, I'm currently using their trial, but this is Lightburn. And this is the box that I designed. I've actually got, there's a website that I used to design a box, but I took it a step further and actually cut out some, some windows here so that these will pop out and you'll actually be able to see through those into uh, that case over there. Ignore the backyard. I don't want to talk about it. Anyway, so <clears throat> so here's what we're going to do. We're going to, I got, I've already got this lined up. If I come over here and I click frame, right, right here, uh, and we hold the camera over here and I click frame, this way we'd actually make sure that our, uh, our, 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 uh, our material here is in the right spot. Um, and I think it is. I do, I do want to double check uh, uh, visually, not through the phone there. Um, just to make sure that I do have enough space up at the top. Uh, it's going to be real close, but I think it's going to work. So, uh, so now that we've got this, uh, here we can see that. Let's let's go ahead and click. Oh, geez, that's not what I meant to do. I'm going to click right there, and right here we can see that is uh, that should actually be line, not fill. And that is line. So basically, you've got options here when you're when you're doing this uh, of line or image or offset fill. Um, so fill uh, is or, or image, I guess, is the other option. But um, but but image is what I used uh, for those pieces back there and others like it. Uh, I actually want to do line because I just want to cut these lines here. Um, so I think uh, I think those numbers are probably going to be uh, pretty. Uh, that that's going to be very, very slow uh, and, and way too much power. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna set this to like 5,000 uh, millimeters per minute that you can see right there. I'm gonna go ahead and run it at 100% because screw it, you know, go big or go home basically. Uh, so I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this other line here. Uh, so my, my millimeters per minute, I'm gonna do 5,000. And then uh, again, I'm gonna do 100 for that. And then I'm gonna click okay. And then just to make sure, I'm not entirely sure if that line even needs to be there, but uh, just for the sake of making sure that I don't miss anything, I'm going to click OK. So now I've got all my settings here good enough for who they're for, I think. Uh, I've got my, my template, if you want to call it that, here. Um, so basically all I need to do now is come down to right here and click uh, Start. And here we go. So I can already tell... That's not, <laughs> it is going crazy fast. I just, I don't think that's gonna be uh, enough power to, to get all the way through there. Uh, so once this is done, I'm gonna slow it down uh, and run it again. I am still very much in the learning process of, of all of this uh, and I love it. Um, and I just kind of wanted to share this experience with you guys. Uh, so there it goes. It's already done both of the main outlines. Now it's gonna go ahead and do the, the window outline like so, it's almost done. Um, okay, so here in just a second, that's going to be done. Obviously, we have not gone through. Luckily, uh, we can go ahead and just run this again. Oh, well, I don't know what that was. That's what that third line there was. Uh, I am going to go ahead, I think, and turn that off for next time. So I went ahead and turned off that third line. Um, so I'm going to take this down. I'm going to drop this to uh, like 2,000. Oops. Let's do 2,000. Uh, instead, this will go up to 20,000 millimeters per minute. I don't even, hmm, I don't get it, but it will do it. Uh, it will do it. So uh, we're going to click OK like that. Nothing over here has moved, uh, so I don't need to reset anything. So what I'm going to do is come right back down to here and click Start. Here we go. Oh, man, it is going to take one more, I think. But again, this is a learning process. So anyway, once this is done, we'll come back and we'll take a look at our pieces. One eternity later. Okay, so we are just about done. I ended up wasting a sheet because I screwed up. So we're cutting it again. Um, and I've gone lots and lots and lots of, uh, there we go, um, passes with this. Hopefully, we actually managed to get through this time. Let's see on the back. I think I can probably work with that. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need to take the plastic off, and I think I have gotten through. 
I think we're good to go. Let me uh, pull that apart and see. Okay, so obviously you can see I pulled one of those out. I just, like that, pops right out. Hopefully these others around the edges will do the same, but I did get through. I don't want to break this. I want to do this carefully with, with both hands, um, but I'm going to go ahead and get these cut apart, or, or pulled apart rather, and see what the edges look like. Here we can see those edges look really, really good, uh, <laughs> except that, you know, they, they don't. Uh, it broke as I was pulling it out, even trying to be careful. Um, so I'm going to have to order more of, of these acrylic sheets um, in order to, to get this done, I think. I might be able to squeeze um, a replacement, uh, one of these, out of the sheet I've got, but I have, I have a feeling I'm going to end up having to order uh, another sheet of this, uh, this black acrylic. Okay, so after I basically destroyed an entire pack of this black acrylic, I ordered some more, kind of dialed in my settings from a little bit more experience at this point, and ended up cutting all of the pieces that I needed. Basically, I, I created a, a long a rectangular, a three-dimensional cube, uh, and did some cutting and that sort of thing. Uh, like I said, or showed up on the screen earlier in this video, it ended up being uh, 500 millimeters uh, per minute at 75% power to get all the way through uh, after five passes. Uh, and that's what gave me some nice clean edges to go ahead and and build the box that I wanted to build. Um, also, I had to do uh, some hand cutting with, uh, with, well, with a hand cutter to cut some of the, the, the clear acrylic panels on the side, but I think the end result turned out really, really well, and I'm excited to share that with you. So this is the finished product, and here we can see all of the black acrylic that I cut on the Laser Master 3. The clear acrylic I cut by hand uh, with, uh, with one of these. Um, just because we can't cut clear acrylic on a diode laser, which I learned uh, the hard way. But we've still got our 5-volt uh, LED fans uh, that are, of course, blue LEDs, or I don't know if you call them LEDs, but they're blue fans, and they're 5 volts, and they were USB-powered until I snipped the wires and plugged them into the Latte Panda 3 that is running in there. It is actually running uh, the, the blue LED. Oops, that blue LED light right there tells me that it's running. The fans, uh, the fan on the device is off uh, because there's enough wet, uh, air going through there to, uh, to keep it nice and cool. Um, but uh, that is the, the finished product. Oh, I will say, um, I did have to, to, because this is my first project and I wasn't sure how everything was gonna work in the long run, like I did make it so that this lid comes off. Uh, it just pops up if I can get my fingers in there. It's just like, there we go, like so. And then I've got a, a black acrylic panel in the bottom with, you can see the wires, the wires coming out right through there, right through there on the bottom. If I could talk, I need more coffee, man. But uh, with the whole thing, you know, I can lift it up and it all stays together. Uh, you can see that it is it is fairly thin. It is kind of kind of sketchy if you grip it like that. But uh, overall, I, I'm I'm super super happy with the results of this project. So I've had the Laser Master 3 for a couple of weeks now. I actually just finished up that project with the new wind tunnel uh, after having created the first one. I, as soon as I created the first one, I knew that I wanted to do a version two, like literally as soon as I put it together. And honestly, I'm having kind of the same feeling about the version two. I, I made it too long. I'd like to shrink it down a little bit and make it so that it's not quite as cumbersome on the top of my rack over here. Um, but with that said, I do want to thank Orter for, for reaching out, uh, offering to send me one of these challenging me to learn something new, um, and, and I've really enjoyed the entire process. Now, strangely enough, um, as I was kind of wrapping up this project, uh, Angus over on Maker's Muse made a video about laser engravers like this that I encourage you, I, I implore you to go watch. It'll be linked in the description down below uh, where he talks about kind of some of the, the things to consider when purchasing a, a laser cutter, laser engraver, those sorts of things. Uh, he talks about you know what you can and can't do with them, as well as talking about some of uh, the safety implications of using a device like this uh, because of the open nature of, uh, of a gantry style laser engraver like this, some of the, the possible risks that are involved with uh, laser refraction and things like that, as well as talking about you know the, the particles and the fumes that will come off of the different types of materials. Uh, I don't wanna go like, Angus does a great job of explaining all of that stuff in very great detail that I will never be able to match his experience with. So again, check out that link or that, that video linked in the description uh, for more information uh, about laser engravers and some of the safety things that you should consider before buying one. Also in the description, there will be a link where you can go pick one of these up for yourself if you'd like to do that. I'll also link to some of the accessories that I've picked up uh, to help me kind of further uh, my progress with learning this device um, and kind of keep me interested 
in and doing new things, new, new creative things. Um, but that's kind of what I wanted to cover in this video. I'm super excited to actually be taking orders from friends and family of things that they want to do. But, uh, but yeah, I'm going to quit rambling. Uh, I do want to thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today. Again, I want to thank Orchard for sending this over and giving me the opportunity to learn a new skill. But with that said, I'm going to wrap this up and I will talk to you guys in the next video.